hold dear. These are the same values that have been eroded in recent years, which we seek to restore. Indeed, our mission to reclaim our land and restore our values was not only the slogan of our campaigns, but a clarion call to all to embark on this journey with us. Today, as we have reclaimed our land, we are now at the cost of charting the course of sustainable development out of the quagmire that we find ourselves in. In this task, we are faced with a number of threats and challenges, yet blessed with an immense amount of strengths and opportunities. My vision for our great state is that this is a place where people can thrive and live their lives in dignity, a place where workers do not labor in vain, a place where our young people do not roam the streets looking for jobs that are not there, a place where our people are not so hungry that they resort to pilfering food to survive, a place where the cycle of generational poverty can be broken and in which our elderly can reap the fruits of their labor over their children, a place where people are safe, healthy, and prosperous. The governance agenda of this administration is therefore compelled to focus on four areas through which we will deliver our promises to the people. The four pillars of our administration will be agriculture and rural development, social investment, infrastructure and industrial development, and entrenching the knowledge economy. Our greatest resource remains our people. As the great sage, Chief Obafemi Awolowo insisted, human beings are the measure of all things. Only a healthy and enlightened people can drive the sustainable development we want to see in Ekiti State. We therefore remain committed to instituting the social safety net that will bring succor to the most vulnerable segments of our society. Our example of such safety net is the social security scheme for the elderly, which I am pleased to say will be revived shortly. Our ideological position remains that no individual in society should be left behind, but everyone should be supported to live out their dreams to their fullest potential in their youth and have a dignified and comfortable retirement in their old age. This is the fundamental responsibility of any government, and in this regard, I am particularly pleased that many of the programs we pioneered in our first time in office between 2010 and 2014 have been adopted and scaled up by our party-led federal government under the social investment program. We will work to ensure more of our people are beneficiaries of these programs. Likewise, delivering qualitative health care is a priority for our administration and we will ensure our hospitals are once again well equipped and functional to attend to the needs of our population. Knowledge economy. Ekiti State is known as the fountain of knowledge. Our people love, seek and celebrate knowledge. We arguably have the highest number of professors and academic pioneers per capita in Nigeria. We also have many of our citizens who are leading light in every field of human endeavor, as well as those who are at the frontiers of research in the academia and scholarship all over the world. It is therefore a logical choice to turn to knowledge as the primary product in which we can trade successfully. To survive and thrive in today's global economy, 
As a Kiti people, we should be committed to using our brilliant mind to promote sustainable development. We will pay attention to fields such as teaching, research, skills development, creative arts, vocational education, strengthening our tertiary institution, and educational entrepreneurship. To this end, my administration will resuscitate the Ekiti Knowledge Zone, which was established during my first term in office. We would also be counting on the input of Ekiti people everywhere in our efforts to establish the critical linkages in our knowledge economy, infrastructure and industrial development. The advancement of Ekiti State's economy is pivotal to wealth and job creation for the citizenry of the state. This is crucial and relevant to the poverty eradication and revenue enhancement mission of this administration. In order to further advance our economic and industrial revolution in Ekiti State, and in furtherance of, of our commitment to jobs and wealth creation, we will revisit the commercial and technical viability of abandoned projects and schemes in the state with a view to reactivating them. These include our vast networks of roads, our many community-based projects, and our flagship tourism asset, Ikogosi Warm Spring Resort. We shall also carefully take on new infrastructural projects that will be strategic in advancing economic growth and industrial development in our state. In order to guarantee sustained operation of commerce and industrial enterprises within the state, the government is required to create a secure environment. An integrated network of security infrastructure will be put in place to ensure Ekiti is once again the safe and secure haven for local and foreign direct investment. This will enhance inflow of foreign and local investment into the state. Agriculture and rural development. Ekiti is essentially an agrarian society with soil properties conducive for growing a wide variety of crops. In order to achieve sustainable food security, create employment opportunities, and foster agro-based <coughs> industrial development for poverty alleviation and wealth creation. The approach must change from the current focus on farming and agriculture as a government social service to a commercial and private sector driven approach, which is now called agribusiness. And I'm glad that my brother, the dean of the federal ministers who is in charge of agriculture, Chief Audio Ogbe is here, and he has given his word that he will support our work in this direction. <laughs> we are therefore adopting a sustainable and commercial value chain approach, which will lead to transformational agribusiness development that can enhance food and personal security, create employment opportunities, empower women and youth, reduce poverty, and create wealth through viable agro-allied industrial development. Beneficiaries of YCAD should be assured that YCAD is coming back in full steam. Our youth in commercial agricultural development. Let us come together. Ekitikete, four years ago, in conceding defeat and promptly inviting the candidate of the opposing party to a meeting, despite the irregularities that marred the election and the bitterly divisive politics that preceded it, as well as the questionable conduct that we all witnessed, I established a tradition of smooth transition in Ekiti State, for which we became a model to the rest of the country. Having initially waited for three and a half years to reclaim the mandate that you gave me in 2007, and which was reclaimed in 2010, I had enough confidence in the triumph of truth and justice to wait for another year, four years to reclaim the mandate again in 2018. If anyone is in doubt about the eventual and irrepressible victory of truth and justice, over falsehood and injustice, 
here is an affirmation of that victory.